So some adjectives will exclusively go with a star. Some adjectives will exclusively go with ser. Some adjectives can go with either ser or star and change their meaning, like aburrido, meaning bored, as a state, or boring, as a characteristic, just changing depending on whether it goes with ser or star. Another example of a word like this is listo, listo. Listo. Now, listo, when it comes with a star, means ready. So, how would you say, I am ready? Estoy listo, or lista, in my case. Estoy lista, or listo. How would you say, we are ready? Estamos listos. Good. And what if we were a female group? Estamos listas. Estamos listas. And what if we wanted to emphasize? We are ready. Somos. No. <laughs> you make it a characteristic <laughs> and it's more empathic. This is a, it's a very interesting idea. <laughs> it's what you said when I go too fast. So it's nosotros estamos listas. Mm, there's a contradiction there. Nosotras estamos Listas. Yes, or female group, nosotras estamos listas, or male or mixed group, nosotros estamos listos. So, to be listo, to be ready as a characteristic, means to be smart in Spanish. So, this is one of the words that we can use with ser or estar, and the meaning changes. So, estoy listo, I am ready. Soy listo, I'm smart. So, if you want to say he's smart, he is smart. How would you say it? Es listo. Es listo. She is smart. Es lista. Good. You are smart speaking informally to a woman. If you forgot the you are, you can think of where are you from. That might help you trigger it. Then on the... Eres. Eres lista. Good. You are very smart. Eres muy lista. Good. The word for soul... Like, I'm so bored or I'm so tired is tan. T-A-N. Tan. Tan. So how would you say, I'm so tired? Estoy tan cansado. Cansada. Good. Estoy tan cansado. Estoy tan cansada. Good. How would you say, I am so bored? Estoy tan aburrida. Good. Estoy tan... Aburrido, aburrida. How would you say he is so bold? Él está tan aburrido. Good. Está tan aburrido. O él está tan aburrido. Now, how would you say it is so boring? It is so boring. So boring, not bored. Boring. Es tan aburrido. Good. Es tan aburrido. The word for good... In Spanish, is bueno. We've mentioned this before. We have in English bon appetit, which is, of course, French, but we say it in English. And you can see the O of bon appetit splitting to become bueno in Spanish. Now, the meaning of bueno changes as well between ser and the star. If you're talking about it is, the change is a kind of change in feeling. Es bueno, está bueno. A small change in feeling, which really depends on dialect. So we won't look at it too much here. You will just listen. But if you refer to people, in most dialects, if we use ser, we get the meaning of to be a good person or to be good at something. So if you want to say they are good, and you mean they are good people or that they're good at something, how would you say it? Son buenos. Son buenos. He is good. Es bueno. Es bueno. Now, if you use a star, it will sound like he's attractive. He's in good form. Uh, so, bueno with a star, if we're talking about people, then gives you this meaning. So, how would you say that? He is good, meaning attractive, in good form. Está bueno. Está bueno. So, you see that uh, you can have many different changes in shade of meaning between ser and the star. So other than the fact that we are being permitted and obliged to perceive and express the world in a certain way by Spanish, which is very interesting in itself, 
we also get the opportunity to use these different nuances between ser and the star. And when you really get your head around it, which is just through listening and observing and seeing how people are using it, you will probably feel that it's missing in English. But sometimes in English, you might want to clarify, not estar, but es. And you can't do it. So you realize that Spanish gives you a tool to relate to reality that in this case, English doesn't give you. And this is one of the most fascinating and exciting things about language learning, not an obstacle to speaking the language. We don't want to say it like this. Oh, every time I used to be, I have to think about this characteristic or state business. No, we want to look at it from the other angle, about what it offers us. How would you say, I want to know how he is? And we mean, I want to know how is he doing? Quiero saber cómo es. How is he doing? Oh, cómo está. Good. Quiero saber cómo está. Now, what would it mean, quiero saber cómo es? What would that mean? How he is, what he's like. Exactly. I want to know what he's like. Good. Another adjective you can use with ser or estar is feliz. What do you think feliz might mean? Happy. And how do you know that? Feliz Navidad. Oh, okay. <laughs> Happy Christmas. Feliz Navidad. But is there some connection in English that might might have helped you as well? Did you hear felicity in English? Yes. Uh, how would felicity be in, in Spanish? Felicidad. Felicidad, which means happiness. Happiness. So, feliz, happy. So, feliz can also go with ser or estar to give the meaning of I'm happy or I'm a happy person. So, we don't need to say I'm a happy person. We can just use ser. Uh, so, like I said, there's no real way for you to know that other than listening. If you wanted to play safe and say, literally, I'm a happy person, it would not be at all incorrect. So, firstly, how do you say I am happy as a state? Estoy feliz. Estoy feliz. Now, I'm happy, and you mean as a characteristic. Soy feliz. Soy feliz. So, this is fine. You can do this. But there's no real way for you to know whether feliz is an adjective that's flexible enough to be used with ser and the star. It really depends on the adjective itself, the word itself, rather than the meaning in many cases. So, with that insecurity and wanting to give the meaning, you could have just said, I am a happy person. And then you don't have to worry about it. So, how would you say that? Soy una persona feliz. Good. Soy una persona feliz. And that's also perfect Spanish. So there you could have said, soy feliz or soy una persona feliz. So to really get our heads around ser and the star, it's important to listen actively and to notice and see how people are using ser and the star and making our own conclusions as to why working with this base of state and characteristic. It's a process of listening. And the more you get intimate with this idea, it offers you a great range of expression that you don't have in English and you should really enjoy it.